So you've got back pain, and I'm really sorry to hear about that. But here are the McGill Big Three, possibly the greatest three exercises tested by science on earth to protect your back from back pain and to help you if you have back pain to progress you to being pain free again. Those three exercises are the bird dog, the McGill curl up and the side plank. But everything comes down to execution. So let's have a look at them in more detail. So let's start with the bird dog. You're going to start in box position, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, toes tucked. Now the most regressive version that I tend to take people through in this position is just a leg extend. But the very first thing we're going to do is cue some tension into your upper body. So what I want you to do is drop your chest towards the floor, keeping your arms completely straight and locked. This is going to pinch your shoulder blades together. Now I want you to push the earth away from you, keeping your arms straight and locked, bringing your shoulders in front of your ears. This is going to add some tension to your lats and into your back. Now we're ready to start the bird dog. From here, I want you to drive, in this case, my left heel. I want you to drive your left heel away from you in a straight line, crucially, keeping your toe connected to the floor. Push back and away. Hold this position, push into the floor, mild brace for your midsection for about 10 seconds to come back. Now, as I did that, I did not sway off to one side. I stayed stacked on top of my points of contact, pushed back to my, my end position, held that tension and came back. If you can do that and do that well with good control, we can progress that on. So a simple cool progression would be to go from just your foot to foot and hand to opposite shoulder or extended away from you. In this position, there should be a nice straight line from fist, which has power in it, down to heel, where my toe is still connected to the floor. Crucially, this is about strengthening your spinal extensors or your spinal erectors. So we do not want to go into extension. We want to be in that strong, long position, but maintain a neutral spine. That's why when we're here, We've got toe on the floor, and then what I'll tell my clients is to squeeze that glute hard enough that the toe hovers. So we've cued that movement from the hip, not about the spine. There are lots of ways to progress this exercise to it being more and more challenging, but let's just start there. The second exercise is the side plank. So what you're going to do is start your side plank in the box position, bring your forearms down to the floor, crossing in front of you. From here, I'm gonna push into my right hand to open myself off towards the camera and I'm sitting on the floor with my feet split and my forearm on the floor. From here, I'm gonna think about standing or driving my hips into extension and I keep tension onto the floor through this bottom forearm. So I'm gonna stand into my starting side plank. My knees can stay down if I need them to or if I feel strong enough to, I can bring my knees off the floor. As I finish, I reverse this motion by sitting towards the floor so I never leave neutral spine. And as I move from side to side, I'm gonna connect my shoulder and hip of same side so that I bring them over together to my starting position and over together to where I'll do the other side of my side plank. The easiest way to progress that is to add time or to go into a full side plank with your feet on the floor and not your knees. That third exercise is the McGill curl up. In case it wasn't obvious, the side plank is there to address oblique strength and the curl up there to address rectus abdominis. So the McGill curl up. We're gonna start lying on your back on the floor. One foot bent, one leg bent, foot on the floor, the other leg long, toe pointed towards the sky. I want you to try and pull your quads up away from your knees in this position and lie down in neutral spine on the floor and your fingertips are going to go into the small of your back. Now, these are pressure sensors. I want you to imagine that your fingertips are made of eggshells and I want you to touch them with your lower back but not break them. So, we're in this position lying on the floor, shoulders are away from my ears, elbows off the floor and my fingertips are pressure sensors. Now I'm going to bring my chin towards my pubic bone or my sternum towards my pubic bone. I'm not curling over. I'm just shortening my torso. And as I shorten my torso, I'm going to keep the pressure on my fingertips the same. I do not want to squash my fingertips. So I go from here to here. And down. Now to make this slightly more challenging, I'm going to increase the intensity of the brace in my midsection and make my leg feel as long as possible and strong as possible until my leg floats, but I still do not deviate the shape of my lower back. So fingertips are pressure sensors. I have tension in my trunk and I'm going to come away from the floor and now extend my leg away from me until it hovers and my lower back stays in the same position. About 10 seconds and then down. I always find that to come up from this position, the Turkish get up is important because I can stay in neutral spine and roll onto my forearm and come up onto my hand before I get my knee back in underneath me. That's why the Turkish get up is so useful. There's the McGill Big Three. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel because every little bit of help that you can offer me in growing this channel is going to help encourage me to create more content like this for you. See you at the next one.